Welcome to Is Your AL Code Robusto Week? What kind of developer are you? Hey, I'm Eric, and um, the sharp eyed among you might have noticed that my background look, looks different because um, I'm in the process of uh, you know upgrading my office. Uh, so it's actually a different room, and you can see I got most of my old stuff moved, but it's Nothing is blinking yet, and there's stuff that is not yet the way I want it. So lightning might also uh, lightning is pretty good right now. Um, if you hear water running, that's simply because it's pouring down outside right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's a big puddle outside. Um, so that's the uh, the soothing water sounds uh, in the background. Anyway, uh, today's video is going to be slightly different than the usual. Or maybe just as usual as the usual. Um, I was uh, goofing around on learn.microsoft.com when I noticed a um, new article, um, which was kind of interesting. So I thought, um, let's, I want to I wanna share that with you. And... Uh, I think it's, yeah, you're gonna like it. So this is the page I'm talking about. Uh, failure modeling and robust coding practices. Uh -huh. um, and it starts out by actually stating something that I always try to explain to a uh, to people when it comes to the Business Central AL platform, um, which is why this exact uh, sentence this here. While it's true that the AL runtime makes sure that the session never crashes. And what does that mean? That means that no matter what you do with AL, you cannot crash the server. If you can, then you know bonus points to you, and 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 Microsoft would like to know how so they can fix it. But from from a no matter general perspective, no matter what you do in AL, you cannot crash the server. You might you know error out and and all that, but that's kind of the it, that's the design. So no matter what's happening, you. Um, you cannot crash the server, um, but that does not necessarily mean that you no know, all bets are off, and, and we don't ha you don't have to think about creating safe code. You don't have to think about uh, things that can go wrong. Uh, just because the platform will save your ass eventually, uh, so that doesn't mean that you don't have to think about it. So, and that's kind of what this page is about um, and it talks about two different things it talks about failure modeling and robust coding practices uh, and and I think it's actually pretty cool so let's take a look at this using failure modeling to reason over possible error situations a failure model is a description of a potential ways that a component can fail as well as cause an effect of these failures. A component can be internal, such as a code unit, method, API, a report, external, such as an API web service, endpoint, outside BC. Uh, there's lots of different things. But each of these components can fail in different ways. Uh, and uh, and you have to think about what kind of fails can 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 exist on on whatever component you you're working, what can be the cause, uh, what is what's happening if you get the fail, uh, but also you know you have to take into uh, consideration what is the probability of something failing uh, versus. You know, you you have a field on a page, and that's it. Versus a code unit that talks to ex web services and prints and whatever hap happening, um, the field might not fail as often, and and there might 
not be for you as necessary to you know, take that into consideration. And um, and and here they, they they even talk about well, you could build a spreadsheet. You know, for each component, think about what fails you can have, what would be the cause, what would be the effect, and and so on. Um, I would never do this for an entire application uh, because, again, the platform will save you ass in most cases. But but there are those other cases where you got to think about it, and um, the exercise is good. Um, And then the next step is to how do how do you how do you prevent fails or how do you handle when they do come, uh, and and they, and they start out here by listing six uh, principles, uh, which I think is is super good, and it's not it's, so this is not like something revelation in in the uh, in the business central uh, product group. These are this is how the industry in general thinks about things. But but let's go through them and think about it. Don't trust any code you didn't write. What does that mean? Well, whomever is sitting over there uh, might write some fantastic code, but I didn't write it. So do I trust it? Maybe, but do I really trust it? Probably not. Uh, so if I'm calling your code, uh, do I trust that you always return if, if, if the return value is, um, is an integer? And, and the, the assumption is that, that this is no, let's say there's a function that returns from one to 100. Do I trust your code? That it always returns a number between one and hundred, and not minus two hundred, or minus two billion, or whatever. Do, do I trust your code that you only return ever what's uh, what's in in the contract between us? Maybe, maybe not. Um, and the opposite is also so. Whoever is sitting there consuming my code. So now we're in number two. Do they trust my code? Do, do I trust them as a consumer of my code? So the opposite part of it. Uh, do I trust that if I have a parameter, so they, they need to specify one to 100 when they're calling me uh, in an integer uh, parameter? Do I trust them never to call my code with minus 200? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Probably I don't. Um, the next one is way more complicated. Um, don't trust the, envir the environment your code runs in. What that means, and we got, we got, a, we got a few examples uh, that are very near to us here, uh, is that you know, with Business Central, everything is an app. You don't know what apps are running on your customers' systems. Thereby, you don't know what event subscribers exist. So let's say that you want to subscribe to an event. There might be another app subscribing to that one uh, and doing something. So, so you might not get the result from an event that you would expect. Uh, and, and, and it can even get to the point where, you know, you have, you're subscribing to two events in a posting routine, uh, and event, uh, number one, nobody else is subscribing to that one. So it's, it's happening exactly the way you want, but event number two, somebody else is also subscribing and manipulating the, the data. And, uh, and suddenly what you expect you had, what you trusted from out of event number one is not the value in event number two. Um, and, and, and that's just the reality of being in a multi-app situation. Uh, so event subscribers, and, and I, there's videos on that on, on the channel where, you know, I have a, 
So, so I have a principle whenever I subscribe to an event is that I try never to make the code being able to, to throw an error unless it's an explicit that we need to throw an error to stop something. Uh, like never having unprotected gets or fines or stuff like that in an event subscriber because you are in a potential hostile situation where you, you cannot trust that another app hasn't changed it. And the, the, the challenge here becomes that there are, you know, there are, there are different styles of apps and, and what they do. And there are apps that changes fundamentals in, in Business Central. Um, a great example comes to mind is the uh, multi entity multi entity management from from binary streams which kind of you know turns a single company in inside business central into multiple companies and now dimension 1 is the company the entity dimension uh, and a lot of stuff is changed so you cannot assume that if that app is installed that the, the data is the way you want it to be because now it has been memified. Um, and uh, that's the environment you, you're in. I think you can, in most cases, trust Microsoft that the platform is, is quite predictable. Uh, but maybe you can't. Maybe there's also examples of uh, of if you are if you're doing something and you're expecting a, a specific performance and suddenly something that usually takes a milliseconds will will take five seconds and and if if you're working with something where timing is of the essential uh you might need to be aware that you're on a on an environment that um, can do something you're not controlling the environment uh in in multiple level so point four offer graceful degradation so so error handling what what when something goes wrong what do you do are you just throwing another error are you are you expecting that this can go wrong so so i call something else or i i call something you you, you work around the problem so your code can continue to run or, or how are you handling when you get into the situation where you get an untrustworthy uh, response. Um, hide your internal data structure. That, that's, uh, that's the next point. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a bit controversial also. Um, any app, and so now when we create an app, you decide your public interface. You decide whether something you create is uh, is public by not specifying anything, is internal or local. Uh, so local, well, then something is only accessible from within the object and, and you can change whatever you want. Uh, internal, then that piece is uh, available throughout this single extension, but nothing else. And otherwise public, then it's um, for everything. There's a lot of apps on App Source right now, including some of mine. Uh, I'm, I'm totally guilty of this. That came in so early that we didn't really necessarily think all these things through. And so, so some of my apps has some internal functions that are public. Uh, but due to the, you cannot break an, an app during an upgrade, those functions are still uh, still public because I'm not allowed to, to change them to internal. But anything new I create in any app, I think about is who is the consumer of this? And if the consumer is not you, then it's either internal or local um, to prevent this. The last one is is Murphy's law. Um, if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong, uh, and you might as well assume this because Murphy was an optimist, and uh, it's the you know when somebody calls in and 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 saying okay the system is doing this, 
and you go through the different stages of grief and say this can never happen well, dear customer what you have explained cannot happen and you go through all the stages and figure out some how did this ever work because it is happening uh, and 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 if you write code murphy is is your is your co-pilot uh, <laughs> um, so now as i kind of walk through all these uh let's see if they have some of don't trust any code you didn't write for all methods that implements a boolean return code check that with a, with an if statement we talked about that uh, for methods that returns a result in out parameter check that result is sound the 1 200 thing uh, for method, AL methods without a boolean return code uh, you can tr run them as a try method question mark uh, no you can't because you they, they, well try methods are complicated due to to database operations um, so that's uh, uh, that's that's a too simplified statement I think have the compiler help you with possible uh, possibility where possible instead of getting errors at runtime when calling in must take object ID parameters try calling them using the scope yeah so instead of specifying 484 for the job queue dispatcher type code unit call and call job queue dispatcher uh, when calling stuff check the HTTP status code there's and a lot of people have jumped into in this case with HTTP status that they check for um, is status code equal 200 then it's good but there's multiple 200s so you can also get a 201 that's still okay and so on so there's actually a better one there's a HTTP response message, response message thing, there's a is successful something code, uh, which is a function that will return true if it's one of the successful HTTP status codes. Uh, we talked about this already. Don't trust the environment. Let's see what they, they say. Remember that you ca cannot know how a customer sets up permissions. Yeah, so that's a good point. So if your code needs access to something specific, might, you might need to add, uh, add uh, specific permissions. Um, but there's still stuff like record refs where you can, uh, you can walk outside permissions and so on. Um, so that's a good point also. I think the other points I made uh, should probably go in here. Um, offer graceful degradations. We talked about that. Hide your internals. We talked about that. Assume Murphy's law. We talked about that. The end. The end. Sorry, that turned out to take way longer than I anticipated. Um, actually, the, the, okay. Assume the in, in, improbable here. Murphy's law. So Murphy's good friend is telemetry, and. and um, the 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 challenge with telemetry is to you know find the needle in the haystack, uh, and and what I found find in in my apps is that I'm using more and more uh, lock message uh, commands. So so I am locking very specific scenarios uh, and, and emitting uh, telemetry for those scenarios because then I. A, I know where the needle is, and 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 it's like a more uh, specific. Okay, I need to know when if this is happening, which should, should never happen. I will emit a uh, a lock message. I'll, I will emit telemetry because I want to know if something I was never supposed to happen will happen. Uh, lots of different examples of that, but but mostly it's. Uh, when I'm talking with web services, and I'm, I'm getting replies back from in the SharePoint connector, for instance, I call SharePoint, and SharePoint decides to throw something totally weird back at me uh, as a, as an error. I want that information together with how what I requested and all all the information because Microsoft does log HTTP calls, uh, but it just log that there's an 
Arrow 400 and, and we don't get the, the body and I don't get the concept on what I sent uh, and, and all that good stuff. Uh, so I can lock that uh, and, and actually know what's, what's happening. Um, so that's very good. Anyway, let me know in the comments below how you get along with this. Uh, uh, is, is this something you think about? Is this something that you don't care because the platform will save your ass eventually? Um, how do you think about that? And in this instant, I was thinking, uh oh, I need to use to be able to point at a video somewhere. I think it's going to be here. Uh, and, and if it's right in top of my face, put in the comments below that I'm not able to point to the right spot. But this is the next video for you. Go check it out. It's a good one. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.